Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to an episode of Pat T's Performance. Today we are going to wrap up Yard Machine Snowblower build. Didn't go as... Didn't go as... It's cold out. You don't want to have cold out. It is, besides my bum, freezing on the concrete. Hey Google, what's the temperature? In Greenlawn, it's currently 31. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's 20. Yikes! Just shouldn't be sitting anyway. Um, so cold I can't even think. Oh yeah, so the build didn't go as planned because I was holding out on a 28-inch blower because I had that free Troy built 2620 for sale and somebody was supposed to buy it. Supposed to buy it the next day, he pushed it back till this weekend. Alright, so I like to try and, and keep in contact with people. One, I don't want to lose their messages. So I reached out to him and he says, Oh, I can't do it, let's do Sunday. Okay, tried to confirm Sunday with him, giving him some options, and he's gone ghost on me. So I didn't want to put two machines around the same price point together. That's not how I operate, I, I try and stagger it. But I dragged it out, I got it going, so we got to finish it, and I'm going to put it up for sale. It is what it is. So, uh, I got my Milwaukee M12 heated hoodie on. It's the second time that I'm using it, it's really, really good. It works. Maybe I'll do a review on it, maybe I won't. But, uh, yeah, let's just get this started. Ugh. So where we left off is that I painted the machine. Well, I modified the impeller and I did some paint work. Oh, and the keyway. Jesus. But this is how cold it is. It is frozen to the mat that I put my knees on. Lay it. Look. Frozen. It won't let it go. So let's unfreeze. Oh my god. How is that even possible? Ice. Ice. Baby. Alright, let's empty out the garage. Let's get some heat. And uh, start rocking and wrenching. I gotta do this every time I gotta work in my garage. Maybe that's a good thing. So that means I'm busy and I have the potential to make money. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, and if you guys haven't noticed, I know I'm a late bloomer because I'm numb to the holiday season per se due to work and everything else that's going on. All my videos will be having Christmas music until Russian Christmas. Yes, we celebrate two Christmases here. It's something that uh, my grandmother celebrated. Even though she's no longer with us, we still carry on to those traditions. And, guess what? My wife and I are going to be announcing a giveaway as well. Well, we'll be giving away a couple of things, actually tools, that I use. So you know you guys are getting some good quality stuff, because that's what I use, good quality stuff. So, uh, yeah, we'll be, doing, we'll be announcing a giveaway. So anyway, enjoy! So I'm going to change my mind, because uh, I guess because I'm moving. Um, we're going to work outside. We're going to do the tire chains outside, obviously for lighting purposes. Now, there are a couple ways to install tire chains. When we do them at my job, on a lot bigger pieces of equipment, we actually lay them out, and we run them over, and then we slap them on. Now, I have tried that on snowblowers, and it doesn't work out the way I want it. So what I like to do is get in the service position, lay the chains over. This will probably be done in time lapse because 
Sometimes it goes smooth, sometimes it doesn't. And I also have a set of chains that I don't know what size they are. It doesn't help my case either. Alright, so you must need your tire chains. Tire chains are modern. Tire chains are ordered by size, so you just go by the size of your tire, 4.8 stage C. Put that into your wherever you want to order from. Order. I get all my tire chains from eBay. I used to get them from tirechains.com, but for economic purposes, eBay's where it's at. Zip ties. And a pair of channel locks. Use your snap on, but use whatever it was. So, okay. lay it out. So, I like to purchase my tire chains to be now because they're a little bit cheaper. I don't really start as hard as But, if you are 8%, 10%, that's when I start stacking up and buying tire chains. A couple of sizes that I can stack. So, So you're going to get a tire chain with something that's similar to this. This goes on the outside, and this goes on the inside. We're just going to lay it over. Like so. Now, these are like snow hog tires. Do they say snow hog? No, they're called. They're very similar in trend pattern. So what I like to do is try and get the chains in between the treads. Because the treads are staggered, it's a little bit hard to do. Actually, if you ever see like uh, some of the older craftsmen, or even like the uh, Troy belts that I have here, these have V grooves in it. And these are awesome because they're even and you could really lay the chains in there. Nice, fresh, even look. With the Snowhog or Carlisle style tires, they're pretty damn hard. And, believe it or not, I prefer the V-style tires. Now, I pray to God, I really, really do. Whoever you believe, I hope that I prefer a different set of tires on my hands. I will order a really nice set of tires. But until then, I use what I got. Alright, so now that we have them hanging, I don't want to stretch these as far as you can. But you got to put a lot of tension on the chain. Now that's another thing too. I felt that at tirechains.com, right, I almost felt like they would cut the tire chains to size. The, whoever I'm getting these from, the cheapest price possible, Bulletproof, manufactured by PLC. I feel that they make a general size and then they throw it in the box, and if it fits, it fits. If, I'm sorry, if it fits, it ships. So, a couple of these tire chains have been way too big for the tire. And it kind of sucks if you add to me. But it works. So anyway, now that I have good tension, as we'd like to say, is I like to fold these. Make sure, see, this is caught here. So let's get this out. Make sure nothing is caught. Because you've got to get these nice and tight. And I like to do one side at a time. And pull this as tight and as far as I can. This might be a little overdoing. It's almost like trial and error. I don't do enough of these to know I'm like the back of my hand. So, actually, you no, know I like to clamp this side first. So, we're going to do the back side and we're just going to clamp that in. Because that's actually a really nice tight fit per se. You don't have to um, really clamp these around. So let's just get it so we have so we're at a starting point. Actually, this one needs to be opened up. I generally use the pliers to close it. I was getting a tire change back home. Here's what it is. 
So now that we got the inside hooked and we have some stability, we kind of know where our tire chains are going to go. Per se. So now we're going to pull them nice and tight. This loose chain, try and not have it interfere as much. Okay, and we're going to lay this one right here. Okay, that's hooked. Okay, and you got to see where we're at. And see how we still have some slack? No good. So we got to make this thing as tight as we can. Even if the tire chains overlap each other. So I gotta find where I'm putting it. So today, I kinda like a seesaw. You guys got an easier way? More for it. This is how I've been doing tire tunes for the past three years at the Jigsaw Puzzle. Right, so that's kind of sort of nice and tight. Like I said, now we get to push. You see how these are overlapping? Something I don't. You see now, you gotta pull up. These become nice and tight. And now we have more slack again, per se. Actually, these are in a really good spot. So now, I have to make sure these are good. So now let's start pulling these forward, ahead. We want these to be nice. Now, if you want to leave a little slack, go for it. I'll try to leave as little as possible. So now we're pretty good. So now we're going to take this, hook this here, per se. And this is where these good old pliers come in because we like leverage. We're just going to clamp these down. Well, here's a funny thing. I'm supposed to sell one mower today to a guy. He's a repeat customer. And uh, I had to give him some tough love. That's life. Long story short, he's getting it. If he doesn't, that's fine. I really have to drain the gas out of it and winterize it. And I told him he's going to have to pay more money when the season hits. That was the, that was the goal. So you can't come next, can't come at the end of the season and say, hey man, you remember that Toro lawn mower? That you, you were going to sell it for 200 Like, nope, now it's 250 That's life. That's my end rant. A lot of ranting lately. Alright, so see this here? We're going to make this nice and tight. You don't want this flailing around. So if you want, either fold this in or fold this out. I like to fold this in. Not even fold it in, but just run it next to it. I also like to give it a little tension. So it's not flapping around. Nice clean look. That's the goal. If you notice everything I do, I'm trying to clean. And then we'll put that there. Good to go. And if you want, for poops and giggles, because this is where this joint is, you can put one here at this joint. But you don't have to. And that's just in case you felt like you didn't squeeze this notch tight enough. And I'll show you the notch that I'm talking about. This notch here needs to be squeezed. I don't know if I can get a good view of that. Just gonna take our vice grips and just at the tip of this, if you want to get it to bend, 
You just squeeze. That's it. See? It's not going anywhere. Now, we have to go to this side. Kind of squeeze the same thing. Now remember, we just kind of put it tight for a mock-up. Now because we have one side dialed in, it's like a seesaw. We think, if you think you can go humanly tighter, push. You know this is pretty good. The way it is right now, we're going to push. We're going to go tight. We're going to go as tight as we can. Like I said, you see how these are just overlapping? It's like... It's ridiculous. And you can't go tighter. So this is what it's gonna have to be. So these are nice and you still gotta do the same thing. Even though this is at a weird angle. Let's see if I can get a better angle. And I can actually right here is a good angle. I'm gonna squeeze here too. I said, the struggle. Now it's pretty important to clamp these, because then you reduce the risk of tire chains falling off. I used to never clamp them, I used to zip tie them. And you know, zip tying them does work too, but. I'm about to leave this thing. It's just on a funky angle. Mm -hmm. and of course I lost it. Where'd you go? Maybe I'll do it this way. Yeah, we're gonna underhook it. Which might be a little tough, but Talking about how cold it is outside. My hands are starting to swell up. It's getting frustrated. Come on. Come on. Can we underhook it? That's underhook. Yes, underhook. And now we can clamp it. Boom. Boom shakalaka. See that? That is not coming off. At all. Now, just like the excess chain, we'll zip tie it out of the way. We're gonna go down. So, ram another zip tie. Same thing, nice and tight. That's one. Let's do another one. Mm -hmm. 
on there and I lied. You need a set of wire cutters or a knife or something to cut these zip ties. Because now we got to make it look nice and clean. Alright, so now that we're here, let's just trim these. Clean. Clean, baby. Look at that. Almost something on no stack. Let me throw these in the recycle pail because we are a little green here, Pat Taste Performance. Alright, so what we do to one side, we gotta do the other, right? Can't have one side chained, one side not chained. So, enjoy the time lapse and the Christmas music. Guys, that's it. Another beauty on the road again. Alright, guys, if you guys found this video series helpful, entertaining, 
even if you didn't like, leave a comment and tell me why. Smash the like button, smash that subscribe button, guess what? I'll see you guys on the next episode of Pat Taze Performance. Later, oh, Merry Christmas.